Gmail and Google Calendar open up here. I'm going to create a brand new project in Google Apps Script, creating a new project. And I'm going to call this project events from email. After I write that, I'm going to go to the script, which is in this uh, GitHub repo right here. I'm just going to copy everything in this script and put it and overwrite whatever is in my current editor on Google Apps Script and just do a command S to save. And you'll notice on the lines 8 through 10, these are three different options that allow you, the user, to basically set up. The first one is the Gmail label. This is probably one of the most important uh, things to make sure you get right is all the emails you send yourself have to get, be a specific email label, uh, email label that you have in Gmail. I, by default, I have it as events from email, all one word, no spaces. So that's a label you're gonna set up in Gmail. We'll do that in a bit. Default event time is set to 30. So whenever you create an event from your email, the default length or duration rather of the Google Calendar event will be 30 minutes. You can change this to 60 or 90 or whatever your default wants to be. The date format is US or ROW. So US is just month slash day slash year. The ROW is day slash month slash year. And those are the only settings that you need to set up basically and everything will work from here. So we're all done with the Google Apps script for now. Now in Gmail, we have to create a label as dictated by what's in row eight of line eight of my script, which is events from email. So I'm gonna create that label right now in Gmail. Let's go to manage labels, or sorry, create new label, events from email, hit create. So now I have, I'm just gonna to go to my events from email label. And there's, nothing, there's no emails here, obviously, since I haven't sent myself an email yet. Now the next step is to create a filter that automatically filters emails you sent to yourself that, that have a specific notation. Now I'll show you what that means. I'm going to go to settings, go to filters, create a new filter. And I'm going to say in the to field of the filter, if it goes to al plus calendar at codadoc.io, this is just a fake email address I have. So you notice here with the email address, if your email is, is john at gmail.com, you can send yourself another email, you send yourself an email that says john plus word at gmail.com. It'll still go to your inbox, but it's just a different alias you can give out to people. So in this case, I have an email address al at codadoc.io. I'm gonna say in this filter, al plus calendar at codadoc.io is the email I wanna look for or filter on. Click create filter. And what I'm going to do is say skip the inbox for this for emails that match this email re recipient and then apply the label events from email and then create filter. Now let's go back to my events from email filter. There's nothing here, but now I know if I send myself an email and it, the recipient is al plus calendar at codadoc.io it will automatically skip the inbox and go to the events from, email fil events from email filter. So that should be all set up. And let's, that's great. So let's try to create an email and create an event. So let's say, let's create an event for September 10th at 9.30 a.m. And it's gonna be dentist appointment. So let's create an email. Again, I'm creating an email now. The, the draft in the recipients line is going to be al plus calendar at codadoc.io. Now the subject line, that's where we put in all the details of my event. I'm going to say dentist appointment comma nine slash 10 for September 10th. In this case, I'm using US date format. So month slash day slash year. Putting the year is optional. If you don't put the year, it would just default to 2021 or whatever the current year is. And I just wanted to keep this as simple as possible. I don't want to have to type in the year every single time because I have to type in an extra slash in the year. So nine slash 10 is the date, comma, 9.30 a.m. 
Now in the body of the email, I can also say cc colon, let's say um, john at gmail.com. And the next line I can say, I'm hitting enter now. It's still in the body of the email. I can say first dentist appointment of the year. So I have my email all set up, my, my email draft. I have the recipient as al plus calendar at codoc.io. The subject line reads dentist appointment comma 9 slash 10, September 10th, comma 9.30 a.m. The first line of the body of the email says cc colon john at gmail.com. The second line says first dentist appointment of the year. Now I'm doing this on my desktop obviously, but you can obviously do this and create a Gmail, create an email in the Gmail app of your phone and send this to yourself. So if I send this to myself, I'm gonna hit send. You'll see that this email now shows up in my events from email label in my, in my inbox because I set up a filter previously to filter all emails that go to al plus calendar at gmail.co.io. All emails that go there automatically get filtered to this label. Now, if I go to my events from email Google Apps Script, I'm going to select get email as the first, as the function I want to run. I'm going to hit run. And Google Apps Script should walk me, walk you through some permissions to get things set up for the first time when you're running this um, on Google Apps Script. Looks like it's taking a second. Here we go. Now it says authorization required, review permissions, and choose an account. So I want to use this account. I want to allow events from email, that's this Google Apps script that I just created, to read my email, also create Google Calendar events. Calendar events, I'm going to hit allow. Authorization successful. And see here in the event execution log in Google Apps script, it's set it to add an event and disappointment. Now if I go to September 10th, Let's see if it added it, and it's right there. It was pretty quick. And you can see here it added my John at Gmail as an event attendee, and also put first at disappointment of the year in the description, and it's obviously at the right day and time. Now, if I go back to Gmail, I'm gonna just refresh my inbox. It should mark the email as red. And there we go. So the important thing here is that the Google Apps script goes through your entire inbox, specifically in the events from email label, and it looks only for the unread emails, and those are the ones it's gonna go ahead and schedule an event for. And the reason for that is because we don't wanna constantly schedule every single event in your inbox, in your events from email label, because that, that'll be a lot of duplicate events. So it only looks for unread emails. Now, how do you actually get this script to run all the time so that when you send yourself an email, the script knows to process the email and schedule the event. In Google Apps Script, you can click on the trigger menu here, and I'm gonna click on add trigger. I'm running the get email function, and I'm gonna say I want, to run this, I want this to run every 30 minutes. So see here, it's, time, it's a time-driven trigger, minutes timer, every 30 minutes, hit save. So now you'll see this as a trigger here. And what's gonna happen is this script will only run on every 30 minutes. 